Hi ladies, this is Milan here of So Natural Wellness, also the Chic Women Don't Diet program. So I wanted to shoot this video today and the title of this video is My Ugly Features That I Now Think Are Beautiful and why you should feel more confident now even if you've never felt that way in the past. Um, but before I get started, I want to show you something that was gifted to me by um, a friend. This is so beautiful. Um, so this is a necklace that I'm wearing is from Tanzania and here. I'm going to just take, so I'm going to show you the outfit, but I'm going to take my um, microphone out for a moment. So this is, So I wanted to show you those. Um, I wanted to show you this necklace. I really wanted to show you this. This is really beautiful. Um, so let's dive into this video because that's why you're here, right? So um, when I was uh, when I was younger, I went through several awkward stages, just like just like you and a lot of people in the world. We have that stage where we're just coming into self. We're trying to look good in pictures. You know, our, our hair just does its own thing. No matter how you try to dress it up. It just does its own thing and you're in this point in life when you're younger comparing yourself to other women or comparing yourself to other young girls but then something starts to happen when you get older so what happened to me and maybe it's happened to you too but there were two things that I hated and I learned to get over and I learned to respect those things and I saw them as uh, something that made me different but I also saw them as something that was um, that was a family trait. So one of the things that I've always um, hated about myself is that I have very expressive eyes and people say, you know, your eyes are the windows to your soul or, um, you know, you don't have a poker face. So well, I've never had a poker face. And if I wasn't feeling good, someone always knew because my eyes always told on me. Um, so you can see I have very expressive eyes and sometimes I would get picked up because they were like, you know, called me Popeye. And I didn't like that. Um, you know, and kids can be cruel when you're growing up. Another thing, um, but it was a family trait. So I had to later learn to really appreciate and really love that. And another thing about me that I didn't like when I was growing up is I had a very, I had a very gummy smile. And um, even to this day as an adult, I still have the same gummy smile. And I've often not smiled in pictures because of those two things not because of that one thing that I didn't like about myself and and sometimes I think it got to me more when um, you know people would tell me don't smile so big you know um, oh you're showing too much gums and later I didn't like smiling I just didn't like smiling because I didn't want to show too much gum I didn't show you know, my joy or my, I didn't want to show my excitement. I didn't want to show my joy. And I get, ex, you know, just, <laughs> I can get giddy or excited about a lot of things. Um, so I didn't want to, I didn't want to get or look like I was overly excited about something. And so I started dimming my light. I started dimming my light because I wanted somebody else to feel comfortable. I wanted other people to, to feel good about me. Well, I couldn't have my eyes because they're me. But when I started wearing glasses, of course, that hid a lot of the um, my expressiveness from my eyes. But the smile, um, I couldn't hide my smile. That's that's who I was. So it affected me as an adult. It started to affect me to the degree that I was holding back. And sometimes when you know you hold back, that's not always good because you let other people shine and then you shrink back so let me ask you have you been holding back because of something that someone said that made you feel less pretty 
And I want you to think about that. And you may have to go back a while. You may have to go back to your childhood. You may have to go to when, in your teen years or in your early marriage, or maybe you've been married twice, or maybe you're a divorcee. So think back to what someone said to you that made you feel less pretty. It's not a good feeling. And many women that I work with, they have um, this inner voice that's telling them that they're not good enough and um, or that they're not pretty enough or they're not thin enough or they're not feminine enough or maybe they're flighty or airheaded. And those aren't really those aren't good compliments to give anybody. And if you hold on to those compliments for so long, they start to destroy who you are. They start to destroy your confidence levels later in life because whoever you are is whoever you, whoever you are is who you are. If, um, you know, I, I remember um, that it's a couple of things I want to really address in this video because I don't want you to shrink back if that's how you've ever felt. So the first thing I want you to realize in order to, to take back your confidence and to feel more confident, I want you to remember that no one can take anything from you unless you give it to them. Do you got that? No one can take anything from you unless you give it to them. So people treat us in essence how we want to be treated. And that's something I've learned early on in my life that However you let people treat you is the way they will continually do it. We don't set boundaries. If we don't set these boundaries on our space and our time, people will take advantage of them. Even while meeting family, there are women that I've worked with who they have a hard time saying no, or they consider themselves to be people pleasers, or they don't want to let somebody down. And especially if you have adult children, no one likes to disappoint their children. No one likes to seem as if they're being mean, but you have to make people respect your time and respect your boundaries. And family is notorious for encroaching upon your time that is right for you. So that's something I want you to remember in people pleasers or wanting to be there for others. You can lose yourself in the process because you're not making you number one. You're not making you a priority on your list. You become not enough to please yourself. You're pleasing everybody else, but you're not enough to please yourself. So today I want to give you permission. I want to give you permission to love yourself and to release the idea that someone's taken something from you. And have you ever thought about that? Have you ever given any consideration to someone saying to yourself, oh, they took that from me. I used to be a happy person, but they took that from me. And I've been there when my, um, my second mother, well, I consider her to be my second mother. And it was my, my grandmother when she passed away. Her name was Roxy, a beautiful name for a beautiful, amazing woman. But when she passed away, I felt I had lost myself. And so I felt I lost myself to grief. I lost myself to transitions in life, things that I started going through. And, you know, because of that, I started developing uh, being other issues along the line. You know, they say that, you know, sickness or grief can make you sick. Well, I started developing things that, that literally made me sick. It made me sick of the fact that I was losing my confidence. And I don't know about you, but that, that, that bothers me because I want to be a confident woman. I want people to see me as a confident woman. My clients see me as this confident figure. So it was really important for me. And I find that a lot of women today, um, they don't love themselves. They don't value themselves and they push this behavior, um, you know, other people. So not that the woman or you don't love yourself, but people in general, there are a lot of people in life who don't love themselves and they don't value themselves. So they push that behavior on someone else. So instead of saying, of course, because you know, you would never say to yourself, oh, I don't feel um, attractive or I don't feel confident or I don't feel manly enough or whatever. They push that onto you. So if you're ever around someone who's making you feel less than who you are or trying to 
push you down so you can't dim your light, it's because they don't feel good about themselves. And they're doing that to make you feel that you're not enough. And that's not a good thing. So when in fact, they have high expectations of themselves that are probably unfulfilled. Um, number two, they doubt that certain area, they doubt certain areas about themselves in their life and they haven't come to love themselves. I remember I was watching recently in this interview and it was something really profound that this actor said, but it was an interview um, with Hugh Jackman. And he mentioned that he is a perfectionist. Do you know of any perfections in your life? I do. <laughs> I know a lot of them. And so this is what he said. I just want to make sure that I'm quoting him correctly. So he said, someone who is a perfectionist because he was relating to himself and he says someone who is a perfectionist perfectionist is insecure and since they've never did anything or accomplished anything perfect so they're insecure but when they think about it then he said he never did anything or accomplished anything perfect he recognized that so they're insecure, they are insecure, so they strive to attain something that they can, they can have because of insecurity. Does that make sense? So anyone that you're around who's a perfectionist that makes you try to make you feel as if you're not good enough, that you're, you're not pretty enough, that you're not confident enough, um, you smile too wide, you, um, your eyes are too big, um, you're not thin enough, you just, whatever. There is someone, maybe where you work, maybe your boss, maybe someone in higher um, up, um, who, regardless of who you are as a high achiever, is making you feel as if you're not enough. When in essence, they themselves are really not enough. So now that you know that about going forward, when you see someone with that quality of being a perfectionist, it changes your perfection, your, your perception, perception about them, right? So it changes your perception and now it helps you to see them as more vulnerable and not so high up, you know, where you're the one who's always wrong when in essence is how they feel about themselves. So the next person who says, I'm a perfectionist, <laughs> you know what they really mean. They're really saying I'm insecure. But isn't that interesting? I thought that was really interesting what he said and I just wanted to share it with you. So what have you been struggling with? What has made you feel less and how do you want to feel? Have you been given away your power? Have you given away your zest, that certain je ne sais quoi that makes you beautiful? So I'm sitting here drinking my Nespresso and this is, you're joining me, you are joining me for an espresso moment. So this is my Monday morning espresso moment. And if you've been feeling like you're just not enough, then I'm going to include a link to this video. And I want you to book a call. I would love to speak with you. I would love to speak with you about how you can reinvent yourself, how you can renew your zest, how you can make yourself much more confident, how you can um, bring out that inner woman who wants to feel more pretty, that woman who wants to lose 20 to 30 pounds. If that's what you want and you haven't been giving yourself the priority, you haven't been giving yourself self-love, you haven't been giving yourself more, it's time because women will achieve more when they feel good about themselves. So I would love to speak with you and until our next time together, our next day of an espresso moment, enjoy your day and stay beautiful and healthy. Thank you for joining me, Trina. I really appreciate you watching this video. And if you have any comments, please make sure you include them um, below this video. And if anyone else is watching this video, you have any aha moments or something that you've never considered before, a new revelation for you, or if this resonates with you, leave a comment. I want to know what you think. I want to know um, how this video resonate with you. So until later, ciao.